Today I'm going to be starting a brand new business. Okay, and I'm going to show you step by step how you can get started with your own web design or marketing agency without getting stuck or hitting any roadblocks or just coming up with excuses as to why you can't reach your goals or get to where you want to be. So I'm going to show you step by step how if I was today to start a brand new web design and marketing company, what I would do. Okay, and we're going to be using AI to really help us along our way. And I'll show you firsthand that this really doesn't take very long. We can get this done within 20 minutes. Okay, you'll have a brand new business name, you'll have a brand new niche, you'll have a offer, you'll know what services you're going to deliver, and you're going to really understand what your ideal customer looks like within the niche that you have chosen. The amount of times I get bombarded with direct messages, or even people within my community and online course asking me what niche shall I choose? Okay, despite there being educational training content around, they are still finding an excuse to not get started. Okay, and it's often down to the niche. This video is going to be really super useful for any of you who are struggling to choose a niche. And I'll show you how we use AI to help you decide on what niche you want to choose for your agency. You're going to find this awesome. I really enjoy putting it together. It didn't take very long, literally 20 minutes to come up with a new business idea, a name, a domain name, a customer, a niche, all of those things that you need in order to get started. It takes no time at all. Okay, so no excuses. Watch this video, watch it through to the end and you'll see how genuinely easy it is to start your business today. All right, so here we are. We're on ChatGPT. Uh, I'm using ChatGPT4. Um, I feel like it's giving me the best results at the moment. But essentially, I'm gonna be using this as kind of the main tool in order to build this new business out. Uh, I've been using it pretty much every single day. Uh, it's kind of a big part of most of the tasks that I do these days, so I definitely, definitely recommend it. Uh, it's, it I mean, it certainly means that I don't have to be going to Google as much as I used to because I can just ask, <clears throat> excuse me, I can ask this tool to, I can ask it pretty much anything and it's gonna give me a pretty decent answer. So we're gonna be running through choosing a niche. Okay, this is the this is the bit that people get hung up on. It's the, the biggest roadblock that they face in order to continue making progress within a business. So I'm, I'm gonna show you what steps I would take while starting a brand new business and how I'd go about choosing a niche. Certainly if you don't know what niche you wanna choose. So let's, Let's get started. Let's, you know, we, we want to be building a web design and marketing company. You want to be building it in your local town or city. You don't know what the niche is. So we could, we could ask it, for example, I am starting a web design and marketing in, in my local city so i'm in exeter so we need to start in local uh, it's always good to start local and then then branch out before i get started can you tell me let's go with 15 lucrative and unique niches that i could help okay so this is going to help us come up with some ideas for niches if you have no idea what niche you want to serve now, I always recommend that you try and find something that you're interested in, that you're passionate about, that has money within that niche so they could afford your services and there's plenty of those types of businesses around or if there's not, making sure that it's new enough that there will be an increasing rise in the amount of businesses that exist. So this is coming out with some, some interesting ones. So we've got local e-commerce, that's incredibly common, that's your, not unique. Real estate agencies, that's not unique. Restaurants and catering, I'd personally stay away from those. Healthcare practices, I mean, oh, come on, chat GPT, this isn't unique. Non-profit, okay, that, that could be an interesting one. Local tourism, that's different. Agricultural businesses, education and tutoring services, legal firms, event planners. So that is fairly unique, you could say. Local independent bookstores, so if you like books, you could target bookstores. Um, construction and home improvement, alternative therapies and wellness. Okay, so I don't really like any of these. I'm gonna ask it. Can you give me another five that are a bit more unique? So we're kind of just brainstorming here. Okay, we're exploring. If you've got no idea of what niche that you could go after, we're, we're basically asking ChatGPT to come up with ideas and see if anything resonates with us at this point. So we've got eco-friendly products, services, pet services, 3D printing services, home automation services. 
As I said, smart homes become more common, companies offering home automation services. Cool, that, that sounds pretty cool. I mean, home automation is growing. I think that could be a good one to explore. You know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with this. Now, once we've got that, we've got, we've got a loose idea of what news we could go after. Let's say, okay, so what search terms do I need to know in order to find businesses within the, uh, within the, and it was home automation services niche. So, okay, cool. So it's giving us, so this is a part of research. It's just trying to understand what we'd need to be searching in order to find uh, the types of businesses within this niche. So we've got home automation services, smart home installation, home automation systems, smart home technology. So for me, SEO perspective, when you get started with your business, it's always good to understand, okay, well, you know, what are people most commonly going to be searching in order to find me or find the businesses that you're looking to help okay so yeah i think that's that's a really good starting point okay now what we're going to do next is we're going to start to look at sub niches and this is something that people get wrong and don't really go as far to explore if you're choosing a niche there are so many sub niches that sit within that and it's really going to help you with trying to really understand what types of businesses that you're going to be helping so let's go with what sub niches exist within the home automation services sector cool and then it's just going to start listing out sub niches so let's have a look so we've got smart lighting we've got home security systems climate control so things like i guess that's like hive home theater and audio systems smart kitchen and bathrooms home network setup smart garden integration this is awesome okay because when certainly when explaining who it is that we help. We can help, we can be helping smart lighting installation companies, home security system companies, climate control companies, home theater and audio system companies. Okay, these are all sub companies that we can reach out to that fall within the home automation services niche. Okay, so we're gonna be helping uh, home automation services, but we would target smart lighting installations, you know, home network setup installations, smart garden installations, smart home integration, energy management, etc., etc. This is awesome. Already, we've got a niche and we've got a collection of sub niches that sit within that overarching niche. Did you just see how simple that was? <laughs> so if you don't have a clue about what companies or, or what sort of niche you can go after, I've just done this in a matter of minutes. All right, so already we've got a pretty good idea of what niche you want to go after. If, for example, you find yourself in a position where you know what niche or you have a pretty good idea of what niche you want to go after, you can follow the same step here in terms of trying to understand what sub niches exist within that niche. So let's say that you're interested in cycling, okay, as a, as a sport, and you want to focus on the cycling niche, you can simply ask ChatGPT, give me a list of 10 sub niches that sit within the cycling niche. It, it is possible and it's very easy for you to understand what niche you're gonna go after and the sub niches that sit within it. Okay, so that's niching done. Okay, we've got our home automation services. Now we want to we want to understand what customer, what types of customer we want to be helping. So the best way to do that is using a ICP or ideal customer profile. This is just going to be understanding where this customer is based, what their team size is like, the who's the decision maker within that type of business, the revenue that perhaps hitting, so understanding how much money they're going to be making, and more importantly, what their pain points are. What are their common pain points that we as a business are going to see if there's any opportunity for us to solve. So if you're not sure what uh, ideal customer profile is, you can just come over here so and it will just tell you it's a description of the perfect company or customer that you want to target for your business okay so i've got everything that we need mapped out on a notion board that you can see over here now disappointingly when i first recorded this it didn't actually capture this part of the screen recording so i'm actually here going back and showing you the process of how we outlined all of this information so this is everything that we're achieving today. We've got choosing our niche, we've got identifying the customer profile, we've got defining an offer and service, and then we move on to the agency name. So we've already done our niche, which is awesome. Now we're on to our customer profile. So coming down, this is all of the information that we need in order to understand our ideal customer. So we've got location, team size, decision maker, the revenue that they make, and what their pain points are. We already know a lot of this information based on what I recommend you do. So the location is, for us, it's Exeter. So 
as I said in the beginning, I recommend when you get started, just start local. Don't try and run before you walk. Just start within your local town or city and see if you can pick up one to two clients within that space at the very least. So let's go with Exeter to Devon. So I'm just gonna unbold that. Now team size. In this instance, what I wanna be doing is going after the small to medium sized businesses. So I'm gonna go between one and 10 team members. Now, what you might find here is businesses that are this small, people that are a one man band, these are running a business by themselves. They might not have the budget, but they might. Okay, this is just me making an assumption here based on experience. They may not have the budget if they're by themselves. But if they've started employing team members and maybe even if it's just one or two team members and they were a whole team of three, that would fit within this team size. And you have a much stronger opportunity for them to have the money they need to have to work with you. That's just a little insight into how I go about choosing team sizes. I definitely think a team size of one to 10 is, is certainly a good place to get started. So that's what I'm gonna be going after. The decision maker. So we need to understand who is it within this organization or business that are making decisions. So within the home automation niche, um, I reckon the decision maker is probably gonna be director. So because we're based in the UK, that's a very common term for business owners. So we've got a director, maybe even founder, perhaps owner. You could even include the likes of a CEO. Okay, so people along these lines, like top of the hierarchy, top of the company. Remember, they're only small, so we wanna be talking to these people. If you were going after a really large company, Getting hold of these types of people is gonna be a lot more difficult. But since it's such a small business, you know, the chances are any contact details that you have for that business, you're gonna get through to, to one of these people. Now revenue, ideally how much money do we want our ideal customer to be making? I'm gonna say at least 10 grand a month. Okay, which will give them 120,000 pounds revenue per year at least. Okay, so six figure companies, we wanna be reaching out to those at the very least. Anything below that, they're really just, from experience, they're just not gonna have the budget to spend money that you want them to be spending. Okay, as a web design and a marketing SEO company, we want them to be able to afford at least a two, three, four thousand pound website, even or even more, or at least to spend five hundred to one thousand pounds per month on marketing. Okay, that's 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 the goal. So revenue-wise, in order for something like that to happen, we're going to do with ten thousand pounds per month, which will give them one twenty per year at, at the very least. Okay, so that's kind of a minimum requirement. Okay, so when getting started and you're reaching out to businesses, we have our ideal customer profile, but honestly, we're not really gonna know what their revenue is until we've had a conversation with them. But there are certain things that you can look at. You can kind of get an understanding of um, in a company's social media, what their team size is, if they've got team members, and then you can start to understand roughly how much money they could be making. But this is going to be a guess and an assumption until you have that conversation with them. And next we've got pain points. Now this is super important. The reason why we need to understand what our customer profile pain points are is so that we can solve them, okay? We might be offering services like website design or paid advertisement, Google ads, Facebook ads, search engine optimization, or whatever services that you want to offer. But we need to understand what pain points they have so we can use those services to provide them with a solution to their problems. That is the whole point of us building a business here is to become a problem solver for home automation companies, but we're just solving their problems through given services like website design. So actually what we can do is we can use ChatGPT to really understand or start to understand what common pain points uh, our niche faces. So as I said, there was a problem with the video and I've already done this. So I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna reveal what it is that we searched. So we've got here, what are the common pain points that businesses within the home automation service niche face? And what this returned was actually super interesting. Okay, it's given us a bunch of pain points that home automation service providers often face. So we've got like customer education, complex installations, interoperability, we've got security and privacy concerns, keeping up with technology. Now, immediately there's a problem here, okay? And we've not actually been specific with what it is that we want ChatGPT to return. Remember, ChatGPT is only as good as the prompts that you can give it. So we need to be a bit more specific here. So these are given us common problems that home automation service providers face. But actually what we wanna know is, 
what can we do as a web design and marketing company? What can what problems can we solve? So that's what we need to ask it next. So what are the most common pain points that businesses within home automation services niche face that my web design and marketing company could help solve? This gives us a much better result. So we've got things like their online presence, brand awareness and visibility, customer education. So this is cool because in customer education, you could go down the route of potentially offering uh, explainer videos, which they can use on their website, explaining their products and services to their customers. So if you're good with the video, that could be an additional service that you offer. Having not done this or possibly not gone through this process, I would have never assumed or, or never thought about offering that type of service. So this is why this whole chat GPT process is super beneficial because it gives you ideas that you perhaps never even thought of. We've got lead generation. So this is a huge one. Now this, from my experience, a lot of businesses, all they wanna do is make sales, make more money and generate leads. Okay, if they have, certainly if they are looking to fill their sales pipeline, they are going to need leads. So that is a very, I would say lucrative pain point that you could look to solve. And we can solve that through the likes of paid advertisement. We can solve that pretty quickly. We can solve that through improving their website, improving their conversion rate. Maybe they already have a good amount of traffic coming to the site, but they're just not getting the leads. Uh, or if they don't have traffic, you could look to offer them not only paid ads, but you could offer them search engine optimization as well. So it's even giving you a couple of ideas here as, as to what you can offer to, to help solve lead generation. We've got reputation management, so things like testimonials and reviews. We've got customer engagement, conversions, so increasing the likelihood of a visitor landing on their site and getting in touch with them and then converting them. And then we've got up-to-date information. So things like a content management system. Maybe these types of businesses don't have websites that are built on a CMS. Maybe they are, maybe they don't, but that seems to be a problem that they have. These people could be busy. They might not have the time to update their information. So maybe you could offer that as a service to them by way of a maintenance package. Okay, so you can see here, just looking at the, all of these pain points, there are things that you can do. There are services that you can offer that help solve these problems. All right, so let's just start filling out our pain points. Okay, so I'm just gonna take some of these. I think that we could we could certainly look to solve. So brand awareness and visibility. Um, we've got a customer education. So this could be things like explain our videos. It could be blogs, etc. cetera. Um, we're gonna say lead generation because I think that's really important. Conversions, so I think that's a good one. Just get up to date information. Keeping up to date information. Cool, so I'm just gonna unbold these. So there, there's some real pain points there that our ideal customer is facing. As you can see in here, this gives us a real clear picture of our ideal customer profile, their location, how big this company is, what the decision maker or who the decision maker is, the revenue that this company typically gets and what problems they are typically facing. Cool, so we can tick that one off. Ideal customer profile is done. So next we need to actually go about defining an offer or a service. So the service, or should I say offer, is essentially going to be almost like the make or break of your business, okay? You can have the best niche, okay? But if you have a terrible offer, if you're not speaking to those pain points that we've already discovered in terms of being or positioning yourself as a solution to those problems, then you're never gonna get anywhere. What you're appearing to offer is just not valuable enough in the eyes of the businesses that you are approaching. So having an offer is going to really help you and having what we call an irresistible offer is going to help you even more. Okay, offering a solution, offering a service that is basically a no-brainer. Now, an offer is made up of three core things, if you don't know what an offer is. I've got plenty of videos on my channel around offers, so make sure that you can check this out. But essentially, an offer is made up of a big promise, time, a time frame, and risk reversal. The time frame is just how long it's going to take for them to get that big promise, and the risk reversal is what is it that you're gonna to offer to prevent, prevent this being a risk to them? So things like a guarantee. That's a very easy way to create risk reversal to the, the customer. So look, looking at our pain points, I think certainly lead generation is, is going to be super important here. So I think offering them leads as a big promise is is going to be awesome okay so i think i think that's really strong let's go with our big promise being qualified leads um, but if i mean we could go as far to say 
we'll get you let's go with five i would say like 10 but since we're getting new and we're going to be testing the water with this we, we don't know whether that is attractive enough for them uh, you might find that you have a couple of conversations and they say that no five is not very much we want more and if that's general consensus then you might want to up that to make it more attractive but you also need to make sure that you can de deliver on it and so i'm just going to go with five at the moment so five qualified leads we're going to say within 30 days so one month and then our risk reversal could be um, they don't pay. So if we don't get them the five leads within 30 days, they don't pay us. Okay, so you can see how, I mean, it's not a guarantee, but that's risk reversal because we're saying we will get you X otherwise. Okay, so we actually need to formulate this into a statement. So we will get you five qualified leads within 30 days or you don't pay us a penny. Ooh. So that, in essence, is our offer statement. So we've got five qualified leads, 30 days time frame, and you don't pay. That is our offer statement. So that's what we, that's what I'm going to take to market in this instance. So you always formulate an offer, make it attractive. If it sounds scary, you're doing something right. So we would take that to market, have a few conversations, and then see whether we need to reshape our offer to make it more attractive. So that's our offer done. So next we need to define the services. So what services are we actually going to be able to offer or what services are we going to do in order to achieve this offer? Like how, how are we going to achieve five qualified leads within this time frame? or they don't pay us? All right, so next up is service. Now, looking at this, qualified leads, the quickest way that we're gonna be able to do that is via ads. And there's two ways we can do this. We can use Facebook ads or we can use Google ads. Ideally, I'd like to be able to offer SEO because that is a great way to get traffic to the website from an organic standpoint. And I think it works very, very well with Google ads. So the first service that we're gonna look at is PPC Google ads. So that's gonna be our lead generation tool. That's gonna to be what drives our traffic to this customer's website. But what we're also gonna to need to offer is website design. The reason for this is if we are generating traffic to the website and their website is terrible, that traffic is never gonna convert anyway. So combining these two services is gonna allow us to get to said goal. And also you might wanna also offer SEO. Okay, these, I like to say that you should have three core services within your business that all complement each other. And this is very, very much the case now. And then another scenario, if we had a different offer, it might be that you offer website design, it might be that you offer SEO and then website maintenance, for example. But these are the three core services that I think would be good to offer in order to get this goal. So that's what we're gonna be offering within this new business. Okay, next we are looking at our value proposition. Now, if you're not sure what a value proposition is, we'll just Google it. So value proposition. Value proposition is a simple statement that summarizes why a customer would choose your product or service. It communicates the clearest benefit that a customer should receive by giving you their business. So we need to make sure that we are describing and explaining what it is that we do for the home automation sector in as few words as possible. So there's a couple of things that we could write here. First of all, we could write something like, we generate qualified home automation leads for you. Okay, so that's just very quickly explaining what we what we do. Now, I always recommend with your value proposition that you place this on your website right at the top, make it the first thing that people see. You might think that you wanna put your offer there, but I think this is a much more powerful statement when they land up on the site. It creates enough intrigue for them to start learning more. So that's one example, we generate qualified home automation leads for you. Or if you wanted to condense this even more, you could write something like marketing for home automation. Okay, but that's that's super, super, super simple. So uh, that's super, super simple and it's a lot more vague. So I'd say any one of these is fine. I think I'm leaning more towards this one because it's a bit clearer as to what it is that we are offering. So yeah, we've got our value proposition as well and you can see how easy it is to put that together. So you can see how quickly we're smashing through this. We've got a niche. We have identified our ideal customer and we've defined an offer or service. Uh, this, this stuff is so easy, but it's what's stopping people from making progress. You're kind of getting a little bit hung up on making sure that you're choosing the right thing. And it's not important, okay? You need to choose something that has money. You need to choose a niche that has money. You need to choose a niche that has enough businesses within that 
that industry and you need to have some sort of interest in it. I do have a pretty good interest in home automation, renovating my house at the moment and there are certain smart features that we're implementing. You're not married to it. If you find that you're not having very much success because everyone's turning you down, you either need to swap up your offer, figure out what it is that would be more attractive to them or you need to switch up your niche, okay? But you need to lay the foundations here in order to get started. You're never gonna know whether you've done the right thing until you're out there in the trenches, having conversations with business owners and really learning more about their business, their pain points, and what it is that they want to achieve. Okay, we're using AI here, we're using ChatGPT to give us kind of an idea, but you're not really gonna fully understand it until you have those conversations. We're making really good progress and there's no reason why you can't make progress here. So now let's move on to defining, or the, at least the fun bit, the agency name and the domain name. All right, let's go. Cool, so this, <laughs> this is probably the, the funnest bit. And I mean, you might already know what you wanna name your business, but we're here, we're using AI. Great, so we can literally just ask, can you give me 20 name, um, business name ideas for my web design and marketing agency for the home automation niche? see what it comes back with. Okay, so we've got Automate Web Solution, IntelliDesign and Marketing, Home Tech Digital, WebWise, Futura Home, don't really know what that means, uh, Connect Web, CyberNest, WebMation, Nexus Home, Prodigy Home, Matrix Automation Media. Personally, I don't like any of these. Uh, okay, um, can you focus more on the kind of growth of, on the helping via my agency. Again, the reason why I'm doing this is I'm trying to see whether it comes up with any other solutions that are a little bit more focused towards lead generation and tapping into the overall goal of growing home automation business. So boost home, elevate automation, I like that as well. So there's actually quite a few more in here that already I quite like. Um, but ultimately, what this is gonna narrow down to is whether the domain name is available. Okay, so we've got a lot of options here. And again, try not to get too hung up on your name, but I think I think it's nice since we are fully, we're going like all in on a niche here, that it's really nice to have um, like a name that focuses on the niche. So what are we gonna go with? Let's start with, I quite like expand automation. I think it kind of encompasses growth, expanding the business, and it, it ties into home automation. I, th I think the trouble with all of the ones that I'm having a problem with with the home is kind of almost positioning yourself as a home automation company yourself. That's kind of not what we want to be to, like perceived as. Um, so I'm gonna go with expand automation now. The thing is, now we need to see whether that domain name exists because if we can't find a domain name for it, then that could really impact what we choose as our business name. So I'm gonna go to 123 Reg. This is the domain name provider that I use. Um, I've used them for years. They are UK based, um, but by all means, use any domain name provider that you want. I'm gonna go with, oh, my bad, what was it? Expand automation. Expand automation. Cool, so expand automation is available. Um, I imagine the .com isn't. Cobalt automation. Um, expansion automation. Um, so we, I mean, we can we can buy this now. So you can see that this domain is available. You can add it to your basket. You can buy it. Um, we've got expand automation with a hyphenation. So if you really wanted the .com and you really want to call your business that, you could go with the the hyphen. I personally don't like hyphenations within domain names, but it's it's totally up to you. Um, so yeah, you can grab that domain name. You can add it to your basket and then you can go through and purchase that. So that's available, so we can call our business Home Auto, um, Expand Automation. Cool, now what we can do is say, great, I like Expand Automation. Based on everything you know, can you write me a tag line for my Cool, so the tagline is something that could essentially just sit underneath the logo that really just summarizes what it is that you do. So we've got scaling smart homes digitally. So where innovation meets growth. So I quite like that. Elevating home automation online. So quite like that as well. Um, building a smart presence. 
not bad. Driving growth, digitally designed. Web solutions for smart homes, um, quite like that as well. So already you can see that we've got tons of ideas here. So let's just go with, so I quite like this, elevating home automation online. So our business is essentially, let's come back to our notion board. So agency name, we've got expand automation and um, tagline is elevating home automation online. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. All right, so agency name and domain name is done. So we've got our ideal customer profile, we've got our offer, we've got a service, we've got a value proposition that will sit at the top of the website, and we have got the business name. Hopefully you found that valuable. I really enjoyed putting this together. It's really interesting to see how easy it is these days. I mean, I certainly didn't have AI in the way that it works now when I started my agency back in 2020. Very quickly being able to pull together a new business concept uh, is, is really fun. It almost makes me want to actually put it together. Um, but you can see firsthand how easy it is, what steps you can take in order to do something very, very similar for yourselves. Uh, it's all about being able to put that offer together, making it attractive, understanding what type of business or customer that you wanna be reaching out to and understanding how you can help a specific business within a given niche. Okay, pull all of those things together like we just did today and you're gonna be absolutely fine. Okay, you're gonna have a business concept, an idea, an offer that you can take to market and present to people within your niche and then hopefully start signing up some clients much easier than let's say if you were to be more of a commodity. Okay, niching is quite important these days. Doing exactly what we've just done now is gonna allow you to stand out and to kind of be a fish in a blue ocean. Okay, there's loads of opportunity. Hopefully you found this valuable. There's an end screen coming up now with more content around web design and helping you improve your business. So make sure you go and check that out. If you haven't done so already, please do give it a thumbs up. Also smash that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. But that's it for me. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.